Hello everyone and welcome to another distinguished episode of Under the Skin, a series where I take a look at the various meanings and references of the weapon skins in Battlefield 1. I'm Christopher, the video game historian and on this episode, I'm going to be taking a look at the Absolution and Cenotaph skins from the Apocalypse DLC, the Blackjack skin from Turning Tides, and the Lennar skin that was recently released with other new skins for the base weapons. The first skin for this video is the Absolution skin for the Ross Mark III, and just like the Deadbeat skin for this weapon is named after a poem about the war. The poem's name is Absolution and is written by Siegfried Sassoon, who was conscripted into the Royal Welsh Fusiliers in May of 1915 and sent to France to help fight in the war. While over on the front lines, Sassoon earned the nickname Mad Jack by his fellow soldiers due to his daring and oftentimes suicidal exploits in rescuing the wounded. In 1917, he was wounded himself on the front lines and sent to Craiglock's Heart Hospital for treatment. It was here he met Wilfred Owen as well as started to become disillusioned with the war. He penned a strong letter that was published in the Times that denounced the war, stating it has been deliberately going on for far too long by those who have the power to stop it. The response was extremely negative, as this was coming from a decorated war hero and poet. It took the convincing of his friend Robert Graves to convince the authorities not to court-martial him as he was suffering from shell shock. He would be sent back to the front again in 1918, where he was once again wounded and sent back to England for the remainder of the war. Sometime after the war, he penned absolution. The anguish of the earth absolves our eyes, till beauty shines in what we can see. War is our scourge, yet war has made us wise, and fighting for our freedom, we are free. Horror of wounds and anger at the foe, and loss of things desired, all these must pass. We are the happy legion, for we know time's but a golden wind that shakes the grass. There was an hour when we were loth to part. From life we long to share no less than others. Now, having claimed this heritage of heart, what need we more, my comrades and my brothers? The next skin is the Blackjack skin for the M1917 machine gun and unfortunately is not named after the card game of the same name, although that would be a whole lot easier. In fact, it's actually named after the Commander-in-Chief of the American Expeditionary Forces in World War I, General John Pershing. Born September 13, 1860 in Laclede, Missouri, Pershing drove himself early on in life to pursue education, and the best way to secure advancing his own was through the military at West Point. In 1882, after winning a competitive appointment exam, he entered the academy, and upon graduating in 1886, he would quickly be assigned to the 6th Cavalry, stationed at Fort Bayard, where he fought against the Apache and later on in December 1890 against the Sioux to quell their uprisings. Once being promoted to 1st Lieutenant in 1895, he was reassigned to the 10th Cavalry Regiment, which was one of the original Buffalo Soldier Regiments made up of African American soldiers. This is when he got the nickname Blackjack Pershing. After being appointed to West Point as an instructor, Pershing became pretty unpopular with the cadets who started calling him the, um... Actually, you know what? I better not actually say what he was really called, but it had to do with the fact that he was commanding the Buffalo Soldiers. Eventually, this nickname would soften down to simply Blackjack. Throughout his military career, however, he would be involved with the Cuban Wars as well as the conflicts in the Philippines and was in charge of the AEF during the Mexican expedition chasing down Pancho Villa. During World War I, he would be assigned to be commander-in-chief of the AEF, where he helped lead the successful Meuse-Argonne Offensive in 1918. 
1924, he'll retire from duty and live until the old age of 88, when he finally passed away. The next skin is the Cenotaph skin for the Enfield M1917, and like the Unknown Soldier skin for this rifle, the Cenotaph also refers to a war memorial, but this time across the pond over in England. Literally meaning the empty tomb in Greek, the Cenotaph is a memorial dedicated to the fallen soldiers of World War I and II located in Whitehall, London. It was first unveiled to the public in July 1919 as part of a celebration to commemorate the Allied victory in Europe, and was to be a small part of this celebration. Prime Minister David Lloyd George commissioned Edwin Lutyens to design and build this memorial with only two weeks' time. With that in mind, the original memorial was made out of wood and plaster. Within an hour after its unveil at the ceremony, which was attended by Ferdinand Folk, David Haig, and John Pershing, flowers and wreaths began to adorn the base of the memorial. It gained so much popularity that discussions arose in Parliament and the newspapers about making it a permanent thing, but perhaps by moving it to an area of less traffic. Lutens disagreed, stating that it was already qualified by Folk and the Allied Army salutes that it would have much less significance anywhere else. A year later in 1920, the Cenotaph was again unveiled, this time out of stone, with an inscription stating, The Glorious Dead, and today honors the sacrifices of the men and women of Britain and its Commonwealth in World War I and World War II. Finally, the last skin for this episode is the Lennar skin for the Selp Slaughter M1916. And this is one of the new skins recently released for the base weapons of Battlefield 1. The skin itself is in reference to Hauptmann Eric Lenars, the commander of the first air raid operation on London in World War 1. On May 31st, 1915, just 10 months into the war, the Germans made a daring assault on the city. Around midnight, the German Zeppelin number LZ38 arrived in disguise over London, filled with 120 bombs aboard the airship. In the course of the attack, over 3,000 pounds of conventional and incendiary rounds were dropped onto the city below, and luckily, the casualties were kept low as only seven people died. However, this attack left the country uneasy as it had showed them that they could no longer rely on their naval defenses at sea to adequately protect them. That's all for this week's episode. Hopefully you all enjoyed it, and if so, please leave a like. Subscribe to my channel and leave your comments down below. Also, don't forget to follow me on social media with Facebook and Twitter and add me on the Xbox One for some Battlefield 1943 action before Battlefield 5 is released. Until next time, I'll see you all on the battlefield.